Look at that beat right there. That is a huge beat. Hi guys, Keith Arkberg Farms. It is now the last week of June and it is just now starting to get really hot out here. It's been 90 today, nice cool breeze, low humidity, but for anybody else around the country, when this comes out, it's gonna be hot, hot. We're talking hundreds. But hey, that's not what we're talking about today. Actually, what we're gonna be talking about is beets. And mainly, is it better to transplant your beets into landscape fabric or direct seed your beets like this middle bed? Never mind the uh, flamingo feathers in here. Those are planted here last year. They're not supposed to be here, but they look pretty so we don't pull them out when we harvest. Anyways, we'll get to it. First, don't forget to head over to arkenbergfarms.com. Scroll down the bottom, bottom tab down there, digital tools and training. Bunch of cool stuff there. We've got a bunch of spreadsheets, we've got our greenhouse side openers, our door actuators, and these nifty t-shirts. Great way to support the farm, so check it out. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is a direct seed of beets. Tried and true method actually works great. This is the first year I've really trialed them side by side to get a comparison. This whole bed all the way around me was transplanted. We've already harvested all those out. Now we're just left with our red beets. These are Detroit red beets. They were planted with the Jang um, LJ24 roller with the chain spacing, the max spacing possible. So that's two and a half inches, I believe. Um, all in all, pretty good, pretty tight yield. I'll get you turned around here and kind of see. We have been thin harvesting these beds to get the larger ones out, to get them to market earlier. Uh, the rest of them, I plan out a lot every year because I get a big order to uh, supply for kombucha actually. So I'll kind of explain um, what we got going on in this bed, take a look at it, and then we'll head over to the uh, last one I have that is transplanted. And I will tell you 100%, these beets do not look the best in the world and that's because it's been so hot. They really, really do not like being this hot in this hot weather. They tend to get wilty in the day, but all in all, they're doing good. I mean, the great thing about direct seeded beets is you can just reach in pulling up. As simple as that, you have a beet. These ones are actually turned out really nicely. We got a few leaves going down on them, but not bad. Great to bunch, three or four per bunch, sell them for market, depending on the size. So the main advantage of direct seeding your beets is that you get really good looking, nice round beets. Um, quick and easy, just run your seeder out, you're done. Easy to harvest, they pull right out of the ground. Um, the only drawbacks would be the amount of time you have to spend cultivating. We don't do a huge amount of cultivating our beets because they're planted early in the season. I think I ran the stirrup hoe through here twice. So I've got three, no, I've got four rows here. They're all spaced about eight to 10 inches apart. That's the width of my stirrup hoe. Um, also did one other cultivation using that little wiry spring weeder, the one that kind of like goes around stuff and moves. Um, didn't have any issues with any weeds or anything in this bed. The biggest weed I have are these little flamingo feathers. These are actually uh, a celosia. I had these planted in here last year. They shoot out a little feather on the end. They're great for, uh, here's one right here. Great for flowers and bouquets. Um, they are kind of invasive though, if you just let them go apparently, because they're everywhere. You really can't see the gloriness gloriousness of these beets because there's so many of them but they got good sturdy tops we did something earlier this year where we put boron down really decreased the leaf spot we've got a little tiny bit but not much at all so that's the main advantages to direct seeding now we'll go over to the transplant bed and go take a look at that so here is the transplant bed the plants look a little bit sadder but again we're on two different irrigation systems but all in all this one has not been harvested at all yet. We've got good sized beets in here. But this leads us to our biggest issue of all. It's stuck in there. A single hole in the landscape fabric, when you go to harvest, if you can't carefully pop them out, they all come out at once. But I mean, in that one hole, we've got four nice beets. That's a single bunch right there. This landscape fabric is actually on four rows 
six inches in row, eight inches in between row. I actually just discovered another experiment I was doing out here. I was testing the transplanted beets versus the direct seeded beets. And this bed here was actually another test bed, which was putting it in our lettuce landscape fabric instead of the typical. Typical, I do a three row into fabric, three to four seeds per transplant. Uh, we got to thin them out because they do multiply a lot. Beans are, or beets are not a uh, monocot seed 90% of the time. Usually they have multiple seeds in each cluster, so you get a lot of them. So you got to thin them before you plant them. But either way, when we do it on three row, we do it 10 inches in between, 10 inches in bed. So that only leaves me three rows. Here, these are actually six inches in row and eight inches in between row. So we got four rows out of it. So we actually got a whole nother row. And to be honest with you, I think this works just as well as the other one. Um, I've checked yields before in between a three row bed and a direct seating. And that always seems to be pretty darn consistent. The main issue you run into with landscape fabric which I believe this actually probably gave us more yield because we have more beets actually in here, is why I just showed you, getting them out of the fabric. I mean, this can be really, really tricky. I'll go in here and find one and turn around on a big one, and I'll show you exactly what the biggest problem is with actually planting them in the fabric. So this is a prime example of the issue of growing them in the fabric. This beet here barely came out. And when it did, it does scar it a little bit. A lot of that will actually disappear when you wash it, but it kind of eats up the beet because it's coming out of a rough hole. The one directly behind it is the other issue. It will not come out of the hole without cutting the fabric. We do sometimes make little relief cuts, but instead what you have to do is actually fish it through the side and then actually out underneath your landscape fabric to retrieve your beet. But you get very little, if any, scarring. But that takes a lot of time. I mean, is it worth it in the long run? So here's a comparison of the beets we harvested. We had our single beet from the field that was direct seeded. Nice, round, beautiful looking. The ones in the fabric, you can see where the fabric actually pinched around it. And since they were growing in a cluster, you get kind of odd shapes. A little bit elongated a lot of times, and there's usually dents in them from the beet next to it. All in all, the taste is exactly the same. They're both delicious. I guess I'm a smaller underneath everybody else, so it's a little rounder. But that is the main difference, is you can get a nice round beet from direct seeding. When you transplant them, because they're all together in this little clump when they grow, you get a little bit of deformation and a little bit of, I guess you'd call more interesting beets. But what it really boils down to more than anything, whether you choose to direct seed or transplant your beets like this, is if you have a major weed or grass problem in an area. I know I have huge issues with purslane in this bed right here. It's horribly invasive. It takes over. It covers over everything. I've actually grown specifically in fabric for the past two years to try to alleviate some of that. Uh, low tillage methods also help as well. Tillage does, you know, Cultivating does a little bit, but it seems to come up when it's hot and everything else is going on, so you don't have time to do it. But with this method right here, I did not do anything to them other than actually transplant them. So let's go back to the transplanting method again. We use a 200 cell flat. We put three seeds per cell, um, grow them for about a month before they go out in the field. When they go out in the field, we will pluck out all but three to four of the uh, plants growing in each cell. So if there's one or two, we just go ahead and plug them in the hole. If there's six, we'll take out three and keep three. After that, they stay in the bed and end up like this. Um, all of our irrigation is automated, so we don't have to worry about it. I will mention again that these were actually uh, planted direct, or these were transplanted the same time the other bed was direct seeded. So coming out to the field, there's really no difference. Um, I will say the direct seeded one, it did go about a week later, but you would expect that this time of year. I mean, early in the season, you're not going to see a huge one week difference from growth that makes up at the end of the year. As things warm up, things tend to catch up with each other and they all kind of harvest out at the same time. So, I mean, all in all, I mean, if you have huge problems with grass, weeds, other kind of uh, invasive plants out in your fields, 
this is the way to go. If you don't and you have a really controlled field and not much weed pressure, go direct seed. I honestly think that after this experiment this year, I'm probably not going to um, transplant my beets if I know I'm in an area where I don't have to worry about grass pressure or weed pressure. Um, once canopy comes up, you don't have to worry about the grass pressure as much. But all in all, this takes time to put them all in the holes. Over there, cedar, done. Transplanting this bed, oh, about 30 minutes to an hour. That's a 40 foot bed. And you've got to start your starts. You got to take care of your starts. You got to keep them going for a month. We do it under lights early in the season. Then they go to the greenhouse where it's automated. But all in all, uh, where the money's at would be doing it direct seeded. Unless you have horrible grass pressure or you're just doing a home garden, you don't want to have to worry about weeding it. So, as always, hope you all liked your Saturday. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day.